Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. A big shout out to the person that suggested this. They suggested I react to a journey of self discovery. So, without wasting time, let's get into the video. Because all my life, I lived by the slogan YOLO. You all know what that is, right? You only live once. And that's what I thought. My entire life was just focused on the same slogan YOLO. You only live once. So enjoy life to the best of your ability and forget about the future. Because this moment in time made me ask some very deep questions. One of them being, what would happen after I die? Because you see, when we get involved with this, the life of this world, we forget about the life that is to come after this. And no matter what your beliefs might be, you might have a different answer to this question. Some people might say, nothing will happen to you after you die. It's simply that worms will eat you. Some people might say, no, you will be resurrected and there is a concept of heaven and hell and that too could vary depending on what faith preference you have or it could be that you will be reincarnate into some other being but the point is we all realize that death is a reality and we have to face it one day or the other no one lives forever but you know all my life I thought other people die but I will never die it always happens to somebody else people die in movies people die in even around us but it will never happen to me and I'm sure you've had some near death experiences as well where you thought you were about to die had it not been for a slight angle of a degree turning this way or that way that could have been the end of us imagine you're waking up in a hospital you don't know how you got there the doctor is opening your eyes because your eyes were kind of blindfolded so he opens your eyes and you see the doctor and the doctor asks you a question Kibeta, what's your name? And you're like, I don't remember. And he says, where are you from? And you say, I don't remember. Who are your parents? You say, I don't remember. So the doctor tells you that, I'm sorry to inform you that you've been part of a train accident. And many people have died, some survived, and you're one of the survivors. And from the looks of things, it seems like you're suffering from partial amnesia or maybe permanent or complete amnesia. And so he asked the nurse that, could you please fetch the few bags that we found with the wreckage? And so she brings a few of the bags and the doctor simply looking at you, assumes that this bag belongs to you. This particular bag, he assumes this belongs to you. So he takes the bag and he opens it. He pulls out a diary and he reads the name on top of the diary and he says, is your name John Christopher? And you're like, I really don't know. And he says, okay, because it says in the diary, so you must be John Christopher. And by the way, your father's name is Albert Christopher. Is that correct? And you say, really, I, I don't remember. I, I have no recollection. So he says, perhaps it is the case. And your mother's name is Margaret. Is that correct? And you're like, really, doctor, I have no clue what you're saying. And he says, by the way, do you know where we are right now? And you're like, I don't even know that. He says, we are right now in Manila, in the Philippines. And you, it seems, are a student of the engineering university and you're in the third semester it seems and this is your address so I've done your physical examination everything else is fine apart from the amnesia so here's your bag this is your address Th these are your mom and dad enjoy your life best of luck and now as you're exiting the hospital you're stuck with a dilemma and the dilemma is you have a choice now the choice is whether option A is believe everything the doctor said that you are John Christopher son of Albert Christopher and Margaret Christopher and that you are a student of the engineering university in the third semester living in such and such address either you believe that and don't tax your brain too much or you can choose to investigate who you really are but this process of investigation would mean that you would have to go to the hospital once again find out who are the other survivors maybe look at them maybe some of them look like you maybe they're your family who knows maybe you need to go back to the police station and find out what really happened maybe you need to go back to the train accident site 
and investigate. So option A is don't tax your brain, believe everything the doctor said. Option B is investigate. Now if you were in this situation, which option makes more sense? Option A or option B? Option B, right? So option B makes sense that you investigate. Now the thing is, interestingly enough, remember the day that you were born? Do you guys remember that day? You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Because if you did, that would be very freaky. So on that day when, when you were born, the question is, did you ask someone before coming to this planet? Did you seek permission from someone? Did you choose to be born in the year 1998 or 2000? No. Did you choose where you would be born? Did you choose the location? No. Did you choose your mom and dad? That, oh God, I need that mom right there and that daddy which is on the third shelf. You know the fat guy with the big mustache? Yeah, he, he looks like a good dad. You didn't choose your parents. Okay, so you didn't choose your parents. Did you choose your face? You didn't choose your face. Did you choose your height? No, you didn't. So you didn't choose these things. And so you didn't choose your ethnicity. You didn't choose your race. You didn't choose your tribe. And believe it or not, you didn't choose your religion. The reason why we are Muslims or Hindus or Christians or Jews, one of the biggest reasons why we follow a particular faith or a particular way of life, because that's what they are. They're supposed to be a way of life. The reason why we do that is because my mommy said so. That's the number one reason why people follow faith. And so we fight with one another over religious beliefs. Why? Because my mommy is better than your mommy. My mommy can beat your mommy. That's why. So oftentimes it's as shallow as an excuse as that. And we will fight each other for that reason. But very few people actually investigate as to why we are here. So like in the example of the doctor, where you thought that the best option would be to investigate and not believe what the doctor said, investigate for yourself. Unfortunately, when it comes to the real world, we don't want to investigate. Because it's way too easy to just assume that you were born into the perfect family with the perfect set of circumstances, with perfect salvation after you die. That's the easy part. The hard part is to ask the questions. The hard part is to do the control or delete reset, which I had to go through and I had to learn the hard way. Now this basically led me to question many things. And when I began to question, I asked myself the, those big questions, especially after that accident. Is there a God? I mean, what if I died? Is there a God out there? Who am I? What am I doing here? And what is my purpose in this life? These are those big, deep philosophical questions that sometimes we think about when it's you know late at night, like two o'clock, you've got nothing else to do. There's no Facebook, there's no Twitter, there's no WhatsApp. And you're thinking and you're in this deep, you know, having this deep conversation with probably a friend on the phone. And then the friend tells you, oh, please be quiet. Let's not talk about this. But these are very relevant questions. And a matter of fact, these are some of the most important questions. And in order to answer them, you need to start opening your eyes. You have to look, you have to observe, you have to reflect, and you have to think deeply. But unfortunately, in the culture in which we're living right now, we go from iPhone to iPad to laptop to mobile phone again, and then back to this and back to that. We don't have time to breathe, let alone to investigate and think and reflect and ponder. But I'm telling you, this is something that we have to do. It is a spiritual exercise that we all owe it to ourselves that we have to do this. When I embarked on this journey, I began to study even Plato and Aristotle. And for example, their philosophy on belief in the afterlife, where they said that where there is a design, there is a designer. Wherever there is a design, there has to be a designer. So you look at the shirt that I'm wearing, does it have a designer? Sure, somebody designed this. It didn't come, up, like come together on its own, no. So what is more complicated, the shirt that I'm wearing or the peacock when it opens its feathers? So we all agree that my shirt has a designer, for sure. But what about the peacock? The peacock came out of nowhere. This design, this beautiful design created itself. And you look around you and you see design everywhere. 
design is everywhere and i don't need to preach to you guys because you already know this you know you admire the fashion designer who made the cheetah print what about the one who made the cheetah you admire the one who made the tiger stripes that tiger striped couch beautiful very luxurious but what about the one who made the tiger you admire the floral prints what about the one who made the flowers is that randomness is that out of chaos and so you observe the universe and this will show you these are signposts to the divine it connects you to a higher power and brings you into an elevated state of spirituality now this journey was a hard one i had to do it the hard way i studied different religions i studied comparative religions i studied every other ism schism atheism everything out there and finally based upon my own faculties and my rationality i came to these conclusions you know no matter how bad i had been before i controlled or deleted myself no matter what my lifestyle was and there could have been a million flaws that i had and probably i still do but one thing that i can say to you for sure that i had something good in me which was that i could not lie to myself i could not lie to myself i could lie to everybody else but i couldn't lie to myself so when the truth came to me even though it might disagree with something this, that i was doing i had the courage to accept it and say you know what that's the truth and i have to submit so the process of change began for me the moment my car smashed into another my head smashing against the steering wheel the airbag opening up the gas from the airbag as disgusting as it may be and so running out of the of the vehicle seeing all the dead bodies and the and the injured people that for me was the catalyst or the engine that provoked me to take that jump and start to seriously question my life and my entire existence of who i am and what i'm doing so i leave you with this thought and i leave you with this that i found my purpose in connecting with the creator and so i invite all of you to take the time in your life to be alone for a while and to think about these deep questions and find your purpose in life because that ladies and gentlemen is an idea worth sharing thank you very much very interesting um yolo people use the term yolo to live a reckless life they use that as an excuse to just go out there and be careless while others i always say people look at things different while others will use that and actually do something important with our life maybe even discover why they're on this earth um self-discovery doesn't happen overnight nothing ever happens overnight you really have to go within to find that self-discovery that you want once you discover why you're in this world why you do what you do why you love what you love then i guess other things may just follow easily because first you began by knowing what you yourself and understanding yourself then later can you understand other things surrounding you um i mean some people may actually even need help to discover themselves but otherwise it's a personal journey that only you can want for yourself and only you through wanting it can achieve it be it with help or with no help and it's really up to you um many of us don't know why we're in this world many of us don't know why anything is the way it is because we don't ask questions asking questions is actually actually a good thing there are some people at the end of the videos when I ask questions and they'll be rude. But then asking questions is just a way for you to um, get knowledge, get more knowledge from someone else that may have it and you may not. So feel free, don't let anyone limit you as to how many questions you can ask in the world. Ask as many questions that you want so that you can find the answer to your question. And you find that you learn more things that way. You just can't get 
get you just can't get information and be comfortable with whatever you've been told what if you're being told lies what if you're being told something that comes with negative energy you have to question everything in life make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video